you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Relax the Podcast. Hi. This is our sixth time trying to start. Just kidding. Uh, we are married. Who do you have to I, send a text Colleen. to? Gosh, I can't even think. How do I start this podcast? I had to send a text to the. I'm Colleen. I'm Eric. And we're married. And this is our podcast where we talk about nothing and everything in our lives. And um, I, Eric just asked who I had to send a text to. That's why it took a while for us to start. I was sending a text because I put. I apply. Oh, well, words are so hard today. Say. <laughs> I um applied. What's the word? I tried to get us an appointment. That's the sentence I wanted to say at a 4D ultrasound place, because this week is our last chance to see the twins, because with twins, you can't see them in ultrasounds after like this week because they're too squished in there. So. It's Friday right now as we're recording this and the office just texts me asking questions and I had to respond before the office closed. Anyway, this is not interesting. What a horrible way to start the podcast. I'm so impressed that you were able to get that information out (laughs) so coherently (laughs) that um, I'm sorry, guys. nobody knows what you're talking about. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. You don't even know. Okay. Uh, A spooky episode. Spooky episode. Yeah, we got spooky sp- stuff to talk about. It's officially October. I'm so excited. Relax, scary farm. Yes. Spooky. Is that episode. a title? Uh, a bad one, but okay. it is one. <laughs> it's okay. Actually, I liked it. Well, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into um, probably the biggest fight, debate, what you will, that we uh, have in our relationship. Other than what uh, we're going to eat. Which is when. Don't, don't, don't even say it. Don't even say it. Because I don't want to get into it yet. This is a huge, like actual, I'm going to get very upset no, this talking is this episode. 10 minutes of gibberish. No, I'm going to get, I'm. if you want to hear me get very upset and us actually get into a fight, which you might not want to hear because this episode is called Relax. And I've, I've read comments from people like, I don't like when they bicker. Um, but if you, if you like it when we bicker, <laughs> you're going to like when we get into it. But we can't do it yet because we, first we have to say who needs to relax. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to, I know I was just going to preview what. You can't even say it because I'll get yeah. so upset. <laughs> Tensions are very high. Sense not happening. Oh, gosh. Uh, Colleen, who needs to relax this week? Oh, God. I was hoping you'd go first because I hadn't even thought of anything yet because I'm like in a good place. I'm not angry about you anything. Seem like it. <laughs> uh, I, who, who I think needs to relax is, um, and I love him more than anyone on this planet, mm-hmm. uh, is, is uh, I don't want to. I'm terrified of like embarrassing him someday. Okay. By talking about this, but our our um our two year old son has an extreme phobia of going. Number two. Number two, and this yeah. is something we talk about a lot on this podcast. It's just poop, poop. Um, Flynn is terrified of going mm-hmm. poop, to the, to the point of which he will hold it in. I know for days. Well, we have to explain why, and, and I just wish. That he would embrace it because it can be such a beautiful part of life. Oh, it's one of my favorite parts of life. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, he is really afraid of this because, okay, a couple of weeks ago, he had an ouchy poo. We've all had an ouchy poo, guys. Most. We are not even five minutes in and we're talking about poop. Um, yeah. So, you know, everyone's had one of those ones that just like, it's not comfortable getting it out. And he had one of those. And ever since then, he is afraid that every time he goes, it will hurt like that one did. And so you think Flynn needs to relax <laughs> or his fear of pooping needs to relax? Fear, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I, but I, I feel bad for him because like we can't explain no matter how many times we explain to him, it'll feel better once you do it. And he always does feel better once he does it. He's always like happy to like get her done and yeah yeah he's instantly then relieved and happy and back mm-hmm. to his happy self it's just like when he's in the act um he has like a specific clench mm-hmm. and walk and hand gestures and no 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 please make it stop i feel so bad for him. i know i feel i feel terrible but um so much so that well earlier today you were getting um your iv treatment mm-hmm. for your many things mm-hmm. um and he wanted to come in here and he's and he sees the equipment and he says, Dad, I want to sing. 
Mm-hmm. He wanted to. He s- loves the microphones. He, he loves the podcast. He he likes to pretend he's doing a podcast. Yeah. Or so he wanted to sing um, the Paw Patrol theme song into the microphone, and so I like I turned it on. And mm-hmm. It was just me and him sitting in here, um, and then it turned into live. Oh and the no! Are we going to show some of it? And so I so we'll I wondered. See, we'll see. I wondered like maybe now you can cut into some of me and Flynn's conversation about how uh, he had. To poop, but he didn't want to. Okay. Um, okay. So well, maybe here. Okay. Maybe. I'm getting my it IV <laughs> medication right now, so Flynn's gonna take over the podcast for right now. Go for it. Ba, 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 okay, Flynn. So I thought we'd do our first um, experimental episode of the Paw Patrol podcast, where we talk all things Adventure Bay. Adventure Bay. Yeah, Adventure Bay. You want to tell me about Paw Patrol? Bo, Paw Patrol. Mm-hmm. You sad? Uh, um, there's another poop coming out of my booty. You're sad because there's another poop coming out your booty? Yeah. Yeah. You know, for some people, pooping is fun. And I have a poop ouchie. You have a poop ouchie? Yeah. Mm, I'm sorry. Sometimes Dada has poop ouchies too. You know that? You too. Do you want to sing the poo poo ouchie song? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ouchie, poo poo, please don't ruin my day. Ouchie, poo poo, <gasps> listen to what I have to say. I push and push, I grunt and squeeze. Poo poo's coming down. To my knees. Poo come out of my booty. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sing me a song. Sing. You do it, Dada. Okay, you want to sing together? Yeah. Okay. Pa, 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 Say bye-bye to the people. Bye-bye. Poor little guy. Um. Aw. I know. I love him. Um. Yeah, that's something. I mean, we've all had... Painful moments doing number two. It's so. probably all my fault. Like it's me not not being a good enough parent to explain. No, you're or the best teach parent ever. This enough. No, it's just something. It's just a phase. Kids go through phases, and the potty training phase is a hard one. And you know, he's, yeah, we're on the cusp of. We've been is slowly kind of letting. We've been we're, on we're the cusp not going to go pot. Let's move on from potty training and pooping conversations. We've had enough of that. I'm going to potty train you first. Oh, good luck. Okay. okay I, um, who needs to relax for me? I thought of one. You thought of one? Yeah. Mosquitoes. Come on. That's a good one. Mosquitoes need to relax, mm-hmm. especially the mosquitoes in our backyard. A lot, of your, a lot of these for you are bugs. Yes. Okay. Bugs and pregnancy related mm-hmm. things need to relax for me, but bugs this week. The mosquitoes in Los Angeles in the summer, the last few years have been so unbearably awful. And the mosquitoes in our backyard are so aggressive and they're more aggressive to, I guess mosquitoes can tell like different blood types, like before they bite into you because I, well, I get bit infinitely more times than you do. I go outside for four seconds and I have like 17 bug bites and you're out there all day and you get one. Like, I feel like they certainly can tell. Like they they have like X ray vision eyes and could see your blood and they're like ooh an O type. I don't blood. think so. I think so. I don't think that's the maybe I let off a, a beautiful scent and they're that like might be it. she smells delicious. I think they can see like CO two when you breathe out. Okay, and they're attracted to that. I think. Hmm. I um, have no idea. So maybe you breathe out a lot of. A lot of CO2. I don't know. I think so. I don't know. We'll have to look that up. We're both stupid, apparently. You're huffing and puffing. <laughs> well, well, some I, of us more than others, but yeah. Okay. Relax. <laughs> All right. So before we get uh, you know, heated. I don't, I don't remember ever uh, when I first moved to LA from the East Coast, like I was like, wow, they have no bugs here. We have it small like, bugs. We don't have a lot and they're small, but in the summer. But one of my favorite parts was like, oh, there's no mosquitoes. Like, oh, there's a lot of mosquitoes. This is what's so great about it. But now all of a sudden there is. Like I'm saying it didn't used to be a problem. I feel like it's always been a problem, but it's definitely gotten worse in the last few years. That's how I feel about it. As a Californian, that is my take. My first many years in LA, I was like, oh, no mosquitoes. This is great. Now no. they're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. There's they're like awful. swarms of them. Yeah, they're horrible. 
they're really bad. Um, and I hate them. And they, I have like, I can't help but to itch them and scratch them. Yeah. And you're I not can't, good with bug bites. You don't, no. just, you don't, you can't just do the X, like the fingernail X in it. And I do move the fingernail X. Life. No, I, I do the fingernail you X do and holes. it just escalates. Welcome to Dermatillomania. Okay. And actually in all like the Dermatillomania support group sites, um, they're all like, oh, mosquito season, everyone. Watch for out your... for the bug season. Oh, yeah. It's going to be bad for all of us. Um, but anyway, <laughs> moving on from that, because uh, I want to get into our heated discussions. Let's talk about um, how much we love our first sponsor. OK, I think this will be good for us to talk about right before we get heated. Oh, should we do we need to get calm before? Let's get calm. Let's talk so we can about have a calm, rational conversation. Let's about talk this. about getting calm, lovey. All right, everyone. If you've been dreaming about a beach getaway, but you're nowhere near the ocean, you may need to get creative with calm. You can listen to relaxing sounds of the waves and give yourself a break wherever you are. We're partnering with calm, the number one mental wellness app to give you the tools that improve the way you feel clear your head with guided daily meditations, improve your focus with calm's curated music tracks and drift off to dreamland with calm's imaginative sleep stories and if you go to calm.com slash rce which is relax colleen eric rce you'll get a limited time offer of 40 percent off a calm premium subscription which includes hundreds of hours of programming and new content is added every single week over 100 million people around the world use calm including us to take care of their minds and their souls don't I we do. love you? I do actually use it. Yeah. We really do. We love it. Sleep more, stress less, live better with Calm. This is something we can't reiterate enough how much we love this app. We've been using it since before they were a sponsor. It helps That's me true. on those nights where I'm full of insomnia, can't sleep. I always rush to the Calm app. And Eric uses it not just at night to help him sleep. He uses it throughout the day if he's doing yoga wants to meditate for a second, needs to calm down, feeling stressed. I feel like we are. Yeah, I was petting our cat uh, the other night and he started purring very loudly. And you were like, did you know that the the purring of cat has been proven to lessen anxiety? That's what I and heard. That's why it's like there's some parts in the app where they. You can hear cat purr. Right. I haven't found that in the Calm app. Is it there? I have probably. It should be. <laughs> Give them ideas. <laughs> Go check. <Yeah. laughs> we should check. <laughs> but yeah, I do. I it probably is because I have heard that many, many times. It I could be a total lie. Well, maybe it's a lie. I don't know if I'm not a scientist, love. Mm -hmm. Okay, but calm knows what they're doing. Yeah. I do not. So trust calm over our opinion of like putting your face on a cat. Don't go get a cat. <laughs> Download calm <laughs> for listeners of the show. Calm is offering a special limited time promotion of 40 percent off a calm premium subscription at calm.com slash RCE. Go to C-A-L-M dot com slash RCE for 40 percent off unlimited access to calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash RCE. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Love. I'm nervous to start this conversation. I know, it gets heated every but, time. But at the same time, I'm um, I'm happy to clear the I'm I'm happy to clear the air of this finally once and for all in our relationship. I feel it's like it's not going to get cleared. I feel like I'll feel better once this is all like settled. And there's no settling. I feel like I wanted. To, I should be more prepared for this. I wanted. I wanted to come into this conversation. Let's call it a conversation, not an argument. Okay. I wanted to come to this with like more, more like research and like statistics of what like other people do. Um, but, but I, all that's, that's out the irrelevant. window when it comes to you, it's irrelevant. And so let's talk about it. Let's so this morning we were driving to the doctor. Let's uh, when we're recording this, it is October 1st. Mm -hmm. We're driving to the doctor and I made some comment about how I wish it was Christmas and I want to decorate for Christmas now that, you know, I've now I, that it's October 1st. It's like finally time, <laughs> but I, I didn't mean that seriously. Like I, but I d would like to decorate for Christmas. Did you know that's what we were going to talk at about? Least, Did you know that was the conversation coming? At least by November 1st. That's the latest I'll do it because I did this with Flynn too. I do it every year, but I'm so, I'm going to be huge. I'm not going to be able to get around. I'm not going to be able to enjoy it. And then we're going to have brand new babies. It's going to be stressful. I want to enjoy the holiday season and not just be like painful last month of my trimester or painful last moments of my uh, third trimester. And then 
we have brand new babies and I don't even get to enjoy it and I'll rush by. Like I want to, the Christmas season makes me so unbelievably happy. That's it great. It fills me with so much, so many sparkles and just wonderfulness. That's great. And I, it has and I always been a you. huge pet peeve of mine that I like to decorate for Christmas. I like to enjoy Christmas music. I like to celebrate the holidays for months and months and months and other people, it makes other people so angry. It doesn't make me I just, angry. I'm asking, I'm what I'm seeking. I just is, didn't know I married one is what I'm trying what to I'm say. Well, that's what I'm seeking is some to. sort of um, compromise here because I am crom compromising. Not, We're not decorating not right now. Compromising love. <laughs> what, what's what it's, there are two major holidays that happen before okay, Christmas a it, major, right now in this. Thanksgiving in this, is canceled first of all. In this all. calendar year, there is Halloween and then there is Thanksgiving. Right. I I just, I don't think it's that crazy to say that like you should not deco decorate for Christmas until after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is canceled, first of all. What do you mean? Because Thanksgiving is a horrible holiday. What we're celebrating I'm not is talking about awful. like the I'm not talking about like the like traditions of it or or whatever. I'm I'm talking about like a, a family meal that is centered around a day that we all have off from work. Yeah, but why can't you do that around like pretty Christmas trees and Christmas decorations? I don't understand. Why do you have to have turkey Since themed Since I've known and been in a relationship with you, I feel like it's it's always been Christmas because that's you have Christmas decorations up in your house. And I don't mean like just a tree. I mean, many trees. Right. And I don't I don't I don't mean like a wreath. Under, I mean, like everything is covered in in glitter mm -hmm. and pine scented. Yes. And uh, you're it, just explaining it, amazing things. I don't get the problem. The the <laughs> amount of um, storage space in this large house mm -hmm. that is taken up with Christmas decorations mm -hmm. is inconceivable. I feel like to the common No, it's not. It's one person. little tiny section. What are you talking about? It's it is, one tiny little section. There is 50 boxes of Christmas oh, decorations. That is not true. You typically put up four to six Christmas trees mm -hmm. in this house of all different two. shapes, sizes, and creeds. I think there's there four. Are three fake, one living. And it's fun to go get a live one. Two living, three fake. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they will be up for months before Christmas. No, I believe someone and named months, the Grinch Stockland took them Christmas, down right if away. I did not take it upon myself. You took them down immediately last to time. To free us. You took them down, like, okay, first of all, here's the thing. Take them down whenever you want. Fine. Be a Grinch about it. But I don't understand why people are so adamant about like you have to have thanksgiving decorate who cares about thanksgiving it's a crappy history people the history can do behind whatever it is they awful. want people can do of course do whatever you want exactly this, my point but this I, is what i want but, but i live here <laughs> that's great so do i but time out a second okay because i just need time to, in no listen time time's <laughs> up love time's up on your let christmas me, decorations let me talk. so you're saying i need to compromise I believe I am compromising oh, God. because I'm not decorating for Christmas in October. I said I will wait till November 1st if I absolutely must. Okay. If you they don't like even to, have Christmas decorations in like Michael's craft store. Yet. They actually do. I was there and they do. You should. There should not be. Here's here's a rule. Here's here's maybe. You can't say a lie and then like brush past <laughs> it. Like you, you're. Your I don't evidence, think they do. Because I think like, this, like evidence, I said, we're a month away from Halloween. So I think it's like fall decorations we're in Halloween. in the month so. of Halloween. Sure. That's what I was about to say. Let me let me finish. So I'm compromising because fine, I can wait till November 1st because I do feel that Halloween in America, not in other parts of the world, but in America, it is a, it's a big fun holiday. Other places in the world, by the way, no one else cares about Halloween. It's like a weird, like American obsession and it's fun. It is fun to get pumpkins and pumpkin-y orange things. Wait, let me finish. Let me finish. So I get that. And so then let me decorate for Halloween in October and go crazy with that. I like decorations. I like festivity. As we discussed last week on the podcast, I love a theme. I love decorations. I love festiveness. So fine. I can get pumpkin candles and pumpkins and orange garland and whatever and decorate the what house What are we that. talking about? We're comparing Listen, Halloween. I'm not comparing. I wasn't. I, you didn't. You're not letting me finish my love. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, I can compromise by doing that, but I don't see why I have to wait until after a holiday that represents something pretty crappy, like to decorate for something that's really happy and fun and brings me so much joy. Why can't I have it in November? It doesn't I, affect anyone else in the world. I'm not Why saying, are these people I'm, no, so I'm mad just, at me about it? It's it's like, it's kind of just a, a, like, since it is 
these are clear markations on our calendar year. So I'm not talking about the relevance or comparing the holidays. I'm just saying that like it's they are seasonal decorative holidays mm -hmm. and you're just foregoing two major ones to skip right to the arguably biggest one, at least for you, especially. And it's just I just don't think why? Who cares? What I was going to say is like your house should mm -hmm. not be decorated for a holiday before a, Michael's craft store is even selling those but decorations. But we've already proven this wrong because, because Michael's craft they, you store. Know the, you should no, you not can't be, use that argument. Your try okay, fine, fine, I'll try a new one. Your house should not be decorated for Christmas before malls are even playing Christmas music because they what? famously play Christmas music in malls like months before Christmas. Okay. Earlier and earlier, it seems every year, this like capitalistic okay. like holiday, you should not be decorated for Christmas before that. Listen. You please they'll listen to me. Please you, love you just married wait till December first. No. You married a woman. We'll have twins by then. I can't decorate by then. And then that only gives me three weeks of Christmas. Why do you want me to only have three weeks of Christmas? That's so mean. That's not enough. No, that's so rude to only let me have three weeks of Christmas when my whole life I've had two months of Christmas and it brings me the most joy in the world. And two every month, every, every single month. I'm like sad. It's still not Christmas. I talk about it constantly, how I can't wait for Christmas. It brings me so much happiness and so much joy. Okay. And it fills my life with so much wonderfulness. I want and you're that like, for you. No, you don't. You want to take it from me. No, and so I let want me say you to this. have all the happiness in the world. <laughs> no, you don't because you I don't want me don't to want have this. I just don't want there to be glitter. Uh, and, and I've compromised, and which you interrupted me when I was trying to say, when I was trying to tell you my compromise. You're making it sound like like 10 months of the year, I'm just, I get this Christmas free life. And then it's just two months out of exactly two months out of the 12 that I have to like shoulder this burden for the, for the benefit of my wife's happiness. Like that's not what happens. Yes. It is like six months of the year is Christmas. Six months. This is what you end up doing. Yeah. Love. It's October 1st. <laughs> Wait, it's what? October six 1st. Six months. I decorate November 1st since I've met you because no. you're such a wiener you about it. You started talking about this and it's October 1st. Yes. And, and I'm, I'm talking about it. Yeah. And then I'm saying like, Oh it'll be God. it'll be Christmas. Then it'll be New Year's. Then it'll be like January. Then it'll be like February. And I'll be like, please, what? can I take <laughs> them down now? And you're, you're like, oh, best. but my happiness, my happiness. And then it's March. And I'm like, all right, I'm taking you them down. So and you're like, ridiculous. fine. But if you want to do it, like you have to do it yourself. That's, and then that is in literally, March, just so you guys April, know, I'm just like, like taking down Christmas decorations. Just like the Michaels lie. That is a complete lie. That has <laughs> never happened ever. So first of all, since I met you, I always wait till November 1st because you're a total Grinch about it. And then you always take them down the first week of January. That is two months. That is not six months. First of all, learn how to count. Second of all, I did say I would compromise. You don't like the glitter. So I said, fine, I'll throw away or donate all of my glitter garland and I'll buy all Christmas decorations with no glitter in it. That's how much I love you that I'm willing to get rid of the glitter, which I love glitter and it brings me so much happiness and joy. And so here's my question it's, to you. I, Wait, glitter, here's my question it's to you. loose glitter. I, and I said, I get rid of it. It's all over the floor. We don't even need to discuss Everywhere. it. Because I said I'd get rid Great. of it. I'm so glad we did this episode of the podcast. I'm so happy we did this because <laughs> you've said here you've committed to no glitter Christmas. If you let me decorate November 1st. <sighs> and here's the other thing, mm. Grinch. OK, so you're saying there's the two negotiation. Wait, listen, you say there's two major holidays before Christmas. First of all, I am. I know for a fact that there are radio stations and malls that play Christmas music starting November 1st. So that argument fails too. But it's October also, 1st. I am aware of the date currently, but you said I can't do this until that. And I'm telling you that happens November 1st. Also, <laughs> if you're like, oh, we have listen to celebrate. To the, listen these, to all the compromise happening. Listen, you go, oh, we, but these other big national holidays. Oh my gosh, we have to celebrate them. You're married to someone who loves a theme, who loves a holiday, who loves to decorate, who loves to celebrate. And so- you're saying, why don't you celebrate these other holidays? Halloween, great, fine. No, I'm, no, 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 I, I've been trying to make this point for ten minutes. Please let me get to it. But like, I, no, please let me finish. Please let me finish. Please. You're arguing a point that I didn't make. No, no, I'm gonna ask you a question. Oh, okay. I'm getting to a question. Don't explode. Okay, so Halloween, <laughs> Halloween. I I feel you. Okay, I don't. I don't agree. I wish I could decorate <laughs> now, but I will compromise and I won't decorate. But you're asking me to sacrifice three to four weeks of happiness and Christmas decorations for a holiday that is based on a white man stealing land and hurting people. Thanksgiving is a horrible holiday. The, the basis of the, the history behind Thanksgiving and how it started is a lie and it is awful and we shouldn't celebrate it. I love getting together with family and eating delicious food. However, 
If you're saying we have to celebrate this holiday. No, no listen. It's I, not what I'm get, saying. Let me get to it. You keep if saying, saying if I'm saying blah, blah. It's not what I'm saying. Then why, why do you care then if we skip over the two holidays? I've literally, saying, I, I, I've said this. This is my third I, time so now saying this. So by the way, this. I have never gotten to get to my question in 10 minutes. You have a question? Yes, I'm trying to get to it. And you keep Ask your me. question. Okay. Name a single Thanksgiving song that I can sing to celebrate Thanksgiving. Name any decoration I can put up to celebrate Thanksgiving. I think I think that the only song is like the Adam Sandler like Thanksgiving song. You could sing that if you wanted to. I'm not arguing for like the prestige. So I'm just supposed of to have, listen to that on repeat for I, a month. I literally only brought it up as like a a clerical fact that in the calendar year there are major holidays. Sure. One of them being Halloween, and the next one being Thanksgiving, and then it's acceptable to decorate for Christmas. That's acceptable to who? Where does it say this? Society, in the law? A, who's, a who rational law? society, love. I wasn't s- s- arguing the value <laughs> of either holiday. I was just saying that like. When if I. That's like saying on a Monday, like, oh, I'm so happy it's the weekend. It's like, no, you got to get through the week. We, we're not getting into the weekend, the weekend conversation again, love. That's a whole other debate we have. We're not getting into the I, weekend I conversation. Almost, I don't know. I, I was expecting <laughs> that here we could have a rational debate. And you've like, you've like. And I've won it. No, you've like. All you've said is like celebrate the other holidays. You're clinging to this idea that I love Thanksgiving and I want to celebrate. I just don't understand uh, your point. All I was saying is, is that, is that. You can't like, I can't be like, all right, well, let's start like um, decorating for St. Patrick's Day because like. I have a lot of Irish heritage and I like that I holiday. Would love that. I'd be so excited if you said that. Well, like it wouldn't make sense to do that. Like, because like there's major holidays before, like, you know what? I don't know if you love decorating and you want to decorate the house, like do that, but it should be, I'm not saying you have to decorate for Thanksgiving either. I'm just saying like, it's, so there should be no decorations until after Thanksgiving. So you just want to have a boring Grinch house of I no happiness. Weird. Have you ever been to anyone's like, um, house or, uh, you know, for Thanksgiving dinner and it's all decorated and there's Christmas trees and it's all decorated for Christmas. my whole entire life, every year since I've been born. Yes. Why is that strange? Why? I just need to have an actual understanding. Christmas is for December. Says who? Who says that? It, what is you, what is the date of, of you say it is your Christmas holiday. You say that it is. You say it's for December. I say I can celebrate it November and December. There's no rules. You can say that you think it you shouldn't be celebrated December. I'm saying I'd like to celebrate it early because it makes me really happy. And if you told me St. Patrick's Day makes me so happy, I just by the way I don't think they celebrate that in Ireland. So if you're wanting to celebrate your Irish heritage, I think that's not a thing. But I don't. I'm not. I was. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to make a point that like you don't like skip like ahead. I would be so excited if that made you so happy and it was like something that you wanted to celebrate. Of I'd be course, so 100. I've let you. I've I've lived my life in shame for months at a what time. Tar- Why do people you care wait, so pause. much? That I like time Christmas. Out. We should. What a great time to talk about. <laughs> we're talking our about. Next- <laughs> no, I'm talking about what? What do you want? To, oh, should we say thank you to our next sponsor, Lovey? I don't think we're gonna get. I don't think we're gonna solve. I'm I'm, I'm desperate to solve this issue. I, don't, I think we're gonna need another segment. The solving. Okay, fine. We'll talk about it. In a and minute. also, I'm sure this is very fun to listen to. In the meantime, no, I'm sure people are pissed right now because I don't think people like it when we. Just so you guys know, we're saying all of this in love and in jest. We're not actually angry with each other. We're like. I think people think we're actually like fighting when we talk like this. Oh, no, we're not actually fighting. <laughs> no, we're like, we think it's funny, but also like, you're so annoying. Um, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you're so annoying that I kind of want to put in like some headphones so I don't have to hear you. And you know what? That's maybe the solution to our problem. I can put in some headphones, some Raycon headphones and Raycons? listen to Christmas music and then you won't even have to hear it. Or I can listen to Christmas music around the house and you can put in the Raycons and then you don't have to hear it. You know what I'm saying? You put in the Raycons, love. You want to listen to your Christmas music in October. Okay. I don't know why you're such a Grinch. But anyway, we need to say thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this episode. We are so excited to be working with them. There's so much going on in this world, whether it's stuff you're excited about, like Christmas decorations, or stuff you'd rather not think about, like Christmas decorations Mm -hmm. if you're Eric. You can't always control the vibes out there, but you can always control the vibes in your head with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds. So... We love using the Raycon uh, earbuds all the time. Eric uses them for when he's listening to. They're cozier in my ear holes than the other ones (laughs) that we won't mention. 
<laughs> when he um, is listening to some apps that make him calm mm -hmm. and other meditations. Um, so that's his jam, but I like to use them when I'm traveling. They're really nice to travel with. And when I'm editing on my laptop and, and travel situations, it's very, very helpful. So whether you use them to pump up or wind down work or workout, Raycons are our go-to on the go audio and the new everyday earbuds look feel and sound better than ever with an improved rubber oil look and feel they're very very nifty how do they feel lovey can you feel them right rubbery now and oily <laughs> <laughs> it says with the new improved rubber oil look and feel does it feel that way feels pretty good yeah it feels great <laughs> optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. These are impressive before you even start listening. You get three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening to sounds its best with just the right amount of bass. So they've got pure mode, which is like podcast listening, blues, stuff like that. The balanced mm -hmm. mode, which is, you know, again, podcast listening. So when you're listening to us, rock, heavy metal or bass mode, which is like hip hop, reggae, you know, whatever. You can choose the mode you like, you know, there's different modes is what I'm trying to get to. There's also an all new awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings. Instead, Raycon offers eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. There's also a built in mic and you can take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button. Raycon start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And Raycons come with a 45 day happiness guarantee. I love happiness, which is why I love Christmas. And it's Raycons. Uh, right now, <laughs> relaxed listeners can get 15% off the Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash relax. That's buyraycon.com slash relax to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash relax. There you go, guys. Check it out. All right. So here's what I think we should do, because I do want to move on and talk about other things. OK, I know. I, yeah, I, I would like to come to some, some sort of resolution agreement. We could get it in writing. Well, I just feel like this. I feel like you and I are both so passionate about this. We're just going to keep interrupting each other as we talk. So we haven't been interrupting. You each other. say, oh my God, you say one final statement as long or as little as you want. I will mm. not interrupt you. And are we then, doing and closing then you arguments? To, and then you have to let me do it without interrupting me. Okay. Go for it. Okay. I, I think that we live in a home, we live in a house. Uh, it is a finite amount of space. You know what I mean? We don't live in an open field. We live in an enclosed location. And I think that that space, when crowded with Christmas decorations, is a bit overwhelming. Okay. And uh, although aesthetically happy for a moment in time, it, it doesn't need to be for all of time that. So I think it is a, a rational... Uh, compromise mm -hmm. to contain that um, that showing of appreciation and happiness for the holiday spirit within the month of December. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Do you have more to say? Is and that no, okay. and no, and no more. I think mm -hmm. a, a month is a long time to be celebrating one specific holiday. I get this. This is a holiday season for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think one month of that season is enough. Like, mm -hmm. I think the way, like, even when people are like, oh, it's my birthday, it's my birthday month. And they try and celebrate their birthday for an entire month. Like, I think that's like obscene. Like your birthday is like the one day, maybe like the one weekend, if you're like really into it, but like to celebrate that holiday mm -hmm. decoratively, mm -hmm. I mean, you could celebrate Christmas all year long if you wanted to, mm -hmm. as long as it didn't involve all the decorations and the music. Mm -hmm. So then how do you celebrate it without listening to music? Just inside, or? just like in your, in, in your heart, in your mind. I am doing that, but oh, sorry, sorry. Is there some more you're going to say? Are you good? I just think that that's, uh, that's acceptable. Like that's. Mm -hmm. Are you good? Can I talk now? <laughs> and if you wanted to, to and if you wanted to, or you needed to earlier, how about like just the day after? Thanksgiving or I mean I don't care about things I mean how about like what do you want you want to do it November 1st mm -hmm. what about November 15th how's that a I'm month and a half okay am I allowed to talk yet that's or my that offer okay well here's the deal first of all I was gonna say 
but you kind of uh, fixed it at the end there. You were saying we need a compromise, we need a compromise, but the compromise was to do what you do, what you I like. was stating my belief. Sorry to interrupt. Yes. And then I was, then I got to a compromise. Okay. I didn't have it scripted out. It was off the cuff. Okay. I got lost. In yeah. I don't have anything scripted either. Okay. So here's what I'm going to say. All right. This has been an issue in my life for as long as I can remember. Christmas makes me unbelievably happy, unbelievably joyful. And I don't understand why anyone would want to hate on or be frustrated with someone else's happiness when it doesn't affect them. So my whole life, I've had people being like, you're decorating too early. That's obnoxious. I'm like, well, it doesn't affect you. So why do you care if I'm doing this? Because I am decorating for Christmas, so it doesn't affect you. The only thing that affects you, my husband, Mr. Grinch, is that there's decorations in the house. Why? I just don't understand how some garland and Christmas trees and Christmas music can affect you so much that you were like, you know what? I hate this so much. I would rather my wife be unhappy and <laughs> sad and disappointed that this is the year she's not allowed <laughs> to decorate for Christmas early when she's been pregnant with twins the whole year. And this is the only thing she says will make her happy. I'd rather not look at garland and Christmas trees and take that from her than just have to see Christmas trees for a couple extra weeks because I've already compromised at waiting until November 1st to put up my decorations and you will have the happiest wife in the whole world once those decorations are up. And I just feel like it, to me, there's no good argument as to why a Christmas tree and pretty decorations <clears throat> makes you so angry. Like, I don't understand why it makes you so upset when like, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't affect you in any way but it does have a huge effect on me and that it brings me the most joy I feel all year. So that's why I don't understand why people get so upset about it. You can do whatever you want in your home. And I can even say like, we won't decorate our bedroom. We'll only decorate the like bottom floor and I won't, <laughs> or just like the, the two living rooms. I won't decorate the kitchen. I won't decorate the dining. Like I can make compromises there. I will wait to do our bedroom and the kitchen and everything else until November 15th. But November 1st, I want Christmas decorations in this house. I've been pregnant with twins <laughs> all year during a pandemic. That's your compromise. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just saying like the it's, it's between like this makes this person so unbelievably happy versus this kind of annoys this person a little bit. Like, it's like, it's like, what the heck? If it, I would give up anything that annoys me a little bit, like, so that you could have something that makes you unbelievably happy inside. You know what I mean? That's what I'm going to say. So I think, that's my first of argument. all, like you're saying it doesn't, you know, your, your history with this argument is that like, well, it doesn't affect you. It does affect me because I live here too. Uh, but secondly, how does it affect you? Do you hear yourself talking? But how does it affect you? Because it takes up all this space in what my space? home. It's supposed to be like this, like. Like, you know, I get to relax here. I get to like be here. I get is to like the tree in your around. bed. Is the tree on the couch? What do you yes, mean? Yes, it's everywhere. No, it's not. Pieces There's no of trees it. on the couch. Pieces of the it. Bed. Bits of it. Tinsel of it. Tinsel, tinsel? and sparkles I don't have and candy canes. I said and, like, I'd give up the glitter no, for you. What you said was you would delay it in certain rooms for two weeks. I mean, do you understand? You hear yourself. It's in every room. You're like, I'll only decorate. The two, you know, the, these two rooms, I'll only have eight trees this year. You know what I mean? That's not if if your version of like, I like to decorate for Christmas and I like to decorate November 1st. And your version of it was like, that's when I want to put up the tree because it makes me happy. And that's when I want to put up this garland because that's what makes me happy. That'd be fine. I'm talking. That is. I'm that's talking it. four to six trees to living. I'm talking gar down the handrails, banister. Everything is covered and. Glitter and things traditionally. Now you're saying you'll compromise with glitter. Thank goodness. But like you switch out picture frames. Mm -hmm. You like, uh, like, God forbid, whatever candles they're selling at Bed Bath and Beyond. It bothers you that much that the picture frames go from gold to it, red and green. It didn't used to. But it only bothers you because fact, I love it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I want you. I want that happiness. I want that joy for you. I, do, I do. But I'm just saying it's. The amount of which you celebrate and decorate for this holiday season <laughs> is oppressive to me. But, 
well, why? I just want to understand why. Like, I can explain why to you, you said, Christmas you makes it. me so happy. I can explain to you the exact reasons why it, it brings me so much happiness and joy. But like, you just go like, it's just in my house. I don't like that. Well, it's so much. It takes up so much space. It doesn't. And it's everywhere. It, uh, the only thing that takes up space it's like it's is like living trees. in Santa's village at the mall. That's a dream come true. Oh first my of all. god! <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Okay, so so where what where we have gotten in mm -hmm. our negotiation here is that I have to give up all my happiness. Is that you will decorate on November first? No, 1st. I won't. I will wait till December. No, you won't. Sure, I will. No, it's okay. Don't stop. I'll wait till December. No, I don't want you to. <laughs> you just do it. Just do whatever you want. I've said my I've said my piece about it. I will it. wait until um I will wait. I will wait until after Halloween. <laughs> I'll wait till December first if you can give me a clear cut reason why it makes you so furious what childhood trauma you had at christmas time that made you so angry at christmas didn't, didn't have any tr no trauma about it whatever uh, like you know what i mean but never had any issue with it whatever like um does christmas make you happy do you yes, like love it lo i i right. it, what's the I'm gonna problem say, i'm gonna say it it used to it doesn't anymore since you met me <laughs> oh no well i know it was, it, well, it was like uh, you know, it was like, like without the bitter, the sweet and the sweet, you know, like that saying, like Christmas used to be like contained to the month It doesn't month apply of, to Christmas. Month of like December. You gotta stop saying month. It's three weeks. 24 days is three weeks. And Christmas is December 25th. So it's only three weeks is what you're talking. You're not talking about a month. It's, that's only three weeks of time. So you're really not saying only three for a month. It should be 21 days, not 25. And like, it certainly obviously carries over into like the, the couple days after, you know what nah, I mean? Christmas joy is gone by then. Anyway, I have to sneeze really, really bad. <laughs> I don't know if that's something you need to announce. I think you can just do it. No, it's like it's stuck. It's stuck in there. <laughs> but anyway, I hope. See, I'm, I'm now I'm worried that like this got so heated that people are going to be like annoyed. with. No, this we're, we're uh, this is all like in. Um, in jest. In jest. This is like an ongoing uh, conversation it's, it's this actually, I think for me it's fun to have this conversation with you right. I find it like well, I, me too it's funny I've, to see how frustrated you get it's funny to see how frustrated you get as well and it's it's something that's like that's trivial and not a real argument in our right. lives or relationships so to like to litigate it if you will uh, because we've never come to any sort of resolution that, yes we have I don't decorate till November 1st <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and I said I wouldn't do glitter this year. Um, in fact, I heard that there's like this progress. big, huge like store up in I don't remember where, somewhere in the valley that has like all these Christmas decorations. And we should go now because everything's discounted because it's only October. And I feel like I could get some really bomb like garland for cheap right now. Where I grew up, can um, we go today? Where I grew up for the better part of my childhood in, in Connecticut, there was a store called Christmas Tree Shops. I need to be there right Have now. Have you heard of that store? Is it Shoppies? Shoppies? I don't know if it's Shoppies. Like, is it spelled S-H-O-P-P-E-S? I don't think so. I, oh, okay. No, I think it's spelled Shops. But it was like a big, like the size of like um, a Target type store that was open year round. It was called Christmas Tree Shops. You've, I think it's a chain. I've been to your hometown so yeah, many times and it. you've <laughs> never taken me yeah, here? I've only been twice. Um, yeah, no, I haven't. I've been more than twice, and I can't believe that. I'm really upset that yeah, you've never taken me I there. I think it's still be there. I wonder if it's a chain. I wonder if they have that in different... I'm sure it's a know. chain. I don't think it's just in... It sounds incredible, uh, and I'm really hometown. sad I've never been there before. But yeah, and it, uh, it bothered me then. The store bothered you? Yeah. Why? Just don't go in it. Why, why well, would there be like a Halloween costume store that's open year-round? Yeah, that sounds awesome. I would, I would go in all year. I need costumes for shows and things. That's amazing. Well, even Party City, like they adjust to the season. You know what I mean? If you go in Party City right now, you know how like they do it? It's like seasonal. I'm sure it's all Halloween costumes right now. Like mm -hmm. it's not like Christmas decorations. No, they do have some. But also <laughs> you have, st that's what stores do. You know, stores, they change with the seasons. You're correct. But how wonderful that there's a store that's like, Let's have this year round. I would love a Halloween store all year round. I would love a Christmas store all year round because then you, ha you know, in March, February, whatever, 
if you need something, you can go get it. That's pretty amazing. Whatever your denomination, whatever brings you happiness, listener, celebrate that. Oh, so they can, but not me? Find out, find whatever joy you can in life and celebrate it and be happy for the moments that you can. Uh, And if that means uh, driving your partner nuts. Oh, come on. You, I think you secretly love it. I love you. You know what else you love? Stitch fix. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm going to say stitches. Maybe that's just because I just had my stitches up. No, I'm not talking about stitches. I'm talking about stitch fix. You got your fix of stitches last week with your wisdom teeth. But this week we're going to get our fix with stitch fix because we love stitch fix. You guys, you know your closet well, but what does it sound like? Yes, your closet. Does it whisper your taste? Does it scream your taste? With Stitch Fix Freestyle, a shop that involves alongside your taste, your closet will scream, so you. Your closet is whispering. There might be someone hiding in your closet. Yeah, this is a spooky episode. It's a spooky episode. Your closet will scream, so you, without actually screaming, you know? Hasn't your closet, has your closet, our closet screamed so you, because we use Stitch Fix. (laughs) Introducing Stitch Fix Freestyle, a shop built just for you. Stitch Fix Freestyle is your trusted style destination where you can discover and instantly buy curated items based on your style, your likes, and your lifestyle. Whether you're looking for a brand you love or to try a new one, at Stitch Fix Freestyle, you can shop a range of over 1,000 brands personalized to your size and fit with styles for workouts to work wear for lounging around the house or for a night out on the town that's us stitch fix freestyle has clothes for any occasion plus there's no subscription required and they offer free shipping returns and exchanges which make it really easy that's my biggest pet peeve when buying things online is if it doesn't fit when it arrives you're like ah i don't have to like figure out how to return this. This is so obnoxious. Mm -hmm. Stitch fix. It comes with a prepaid package and you just throw it in the little bag and put it in any mailbox. It's so convenient. And, um, yeah, we love it. You always get cute stuff from stitch fix. I love it. Your recent, I I'm waiting until I can fit into them again because (laughs) I've, uh, gotten a little big -er than I was, but, um, your stuff that you got recently is so cute. (laughs) Thanks. Lovey. You're welcome. You look so cute. You have your own personal stylist. Who doesn't want that? Never had a stylist before. Well, you do now. Stitch Fix. If you guys want to try it, you can get started today by filling out your style quiz at stitchfix.com slash relax. That's stitchfix.com slash relax to try Stitch Fix freestyle. Stitchfix.com slash relax. Speaking of big, I think it's time. It's been a while. <laughs> Boom, Oh, God. <laughs> You're still doing these? Okay, here we go. Stitch. What are we doing? A bump check? We're doing a bump check. Did you say Stitch Fix? <laughs> you go, what are we doing? Stitch Fix? <laughs> okay, there she is. Whoa, the biggest pumpkin in the patch. Happy spooky season. Uh, love. <laughs> Please submit your Halloween costume ideas for us. Yeah. Like, what do I feel like people that uh, yes. happen upon spooky season during a, a pregnancy? Uh, there's there's ideas that they have. You're it's like it's the seed in the avocado. Right. There's like but I don't want to do baby something that doll everyone's done. parts poking out. Exactly. No, I'm saying it's yeah. like a basket. I don't know. It's something. Yeah. Yeah. Mine. Mine. By the time we get to Halloween, I feel like it's going to be a real torpedo. Like I feel like it's really going to be jetting out and drooping. So jetting and drooping, jetting and drooping. Um, so any <laughs> ideas would be great. Um, but here's the deal this, this episode was supposed to be the spooky episode, which I guess it was pretty spooky because we just like fought the whole time. Um, and that's kind of spooky, Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the plan was to be like, Oh, it's October 1st. And that's why we wanted to talk about this October 1st, November 1st, December 1st Christmas debate. But the real, we wanted to talk about Halloween, here. Halloween episode. So it's, um, I know we're deep into the episode now, but it's Halloween time. Halloween, Halloween. I say Halloween and people have made fun of me for that. I guess other people say Halloween. Halloween. No. I say Halloween, like hollow, which is incorrect because it's like H-O, Halloween. I don't know. Anyway, how do you say it? People listening. My brain literally just tore in half. Did you hear it? (laughs) Just even... (laughs) processing okay. whatever you were talking about. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. So uh, Halloween, this, Halloween. Halloween is a very interesting time of year for me because it was a time that I was not allowed to celebrate during my childhood. So I never got fascinating the, like, to me. Yeah. I, I never got to 
experience the joy and fun of Halloween growing a, up. What age? I was either 12 or th- I think 13, maybe 12, but I think I was 13 the first year I was allowed to celebrate Halloween. And I've always thought that my first Halloween, I was dressed up like Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz. Right. But I just remember today when I was thinking about this, how we we're going to talk about this, that my first Halloween, actually, I dressed up like a 50s like girl. And um, I wore a poodle skirt. Oh, 50, and because okay. it was like I already had that costume. My parents finally were like, OK, you can celebrate. Finally, they let us. And they said, we're not buying you costumes like figure figure it out. Like we're not participating, essentially. And so. I had, I already had this fifties style, like poodle skirt costume. And I don't think I was allowed to trick or treat that year. I think we were just allowed to celebrate. Like we were allowed to dress up and I think we went bowling or something. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember, but I know for a fact when I was 13, I dressed up like Dorothy from the wizard of Oz. And, um, I made my own Ruby shoes. I went to the thrift store and bought shoes and covered them in glitter So I made these red shoes and I was allowed to go trick or treating and almost every house I went to was like, you're too old to be trick or treating. And I was really sad because I never got to do it my whole childhood. People actually said that to you? Yes. Oh yeah. I don't think I've ever said to anyone, you're too old to be trick or treating before. I think I've thought it. Yeah. I've never said that or thought that even because I don't. Why, why can't kids trick or treat in their, their but also school? just to like, just, I mean, you're, they're already there. They're at your door. There's a stranger well, at your door asking for and candy you and you're going to call them out to their well, face. I just think it's weird because like Halloween, like I feel like people celebrate it here in America two ways. Well, three ways you either give away candy at your door or you dress up, you go trick or treating, or you go to a party. Like if our kids are in high school and they're like, we want to go trick or treating, I'd way rather they go trick or treating than go to like some crazy party. Do you know what I mean? Like I'd feel safe for having them go door to door to collect candy than to go like potentially get drunk or do, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it's like the safer option of the two. Why are you walking around in the dark, knocking on the doors of strangers, asking them for like illicit like foods that they didn't buy? I don't know. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it just seems like. I want our kids to have friends and party. Lovey. What? (laughs) (laughs) You're going to be the one who has the party here. You're going to be like, you guys want some beer? No, he I'm, would not. Whoa, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, I did uh, not get to experience Halloween as a kid. And um, it was for religious reasons. Uh, my my family believed that H- Halloween was celebrating like demonic, satanic, like scary things. And they didn't want me to be involved in that. So we just didn't celebrate it. So when we finally did start celebrating at first, we did not go trick or treating. We went to harvest festivals or fall festivals, usually put on by a church where you just kind of go and it's like fall decorations and you worship and maybe get some candy, but you can dress up at that. Fun. And I think I did that a year or two. And then I went trick or treating and it was just really, so I basically only got to celebrate Halloween for two years of my childhood. And it wasn't even my childhood. It, it was, ch- my it was like your years. adolescence. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I want to know about yours. Like, I want to know about your trigger. Like, did you love that Halloween something, as a kid? Well, uh, is that something you will want for our children or will they be allowed to celebrate? Yes. Huh? Well, Flynn already what? has every year. We go crazy <laughs> on Halloween. I love it. I um, love it. So fun. I think Halloween is so much fun. It's so exciting. Yeah. Some of my favorite photos to look at from my childhood are, are Halloween ones. And I think um, because aesthetically it's, it's, it's so cool to see that like most, if not all of my Halloween costumes were made by hand by it's amazing my mom, which is something I feel like you'd be really good at too and would be interested I, in. I want to learn how to sew um, for that like exact reason. She actually brought a couple last time she visited us. Mm-hmm. There's uh, one that was like a tiger. Tigger kind of ish. A tigger, a tiger, tiger, not yeah, kind of like more, more tiger. <laughs> tigers. But it's cool because like there will be old photos of like, all of us at, at a different year wore that mm-hmm. one or like a wolf one. Like my favorite was like, I really wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. And she got very creative and made a whole shell that I could wear and everything it was. And, and it's yeah. So like how old are you? Do you remember uh, for that one? Probably like first, second or third grade somewhere, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, so like that. Uh, that holiday to me was never about like any sort of pagan ritual it was about like my mom's gonna make this really awesome costume and i get a bunch of sugar candy Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah like i would go trick-or-treating with not a 
bucket, like a little pail. I would go with a pillowcase. Yeah, we went with pillowcases. And I would be like f- trying to fill up. Mm-hmm. Did you? I would try. Yeah. I'd be out for Did your parents go with you that. or did you go alone with your siblings or something? Your I think they always went with us. And then and then I got to the age where I was I was the kid that was too old to be trick-or-treating. And just so what, some at what age was that for you? What do you, like, I do think you remember? Like, like sixth, seventh grade. Okay, I thought you were going to say six or seven years old. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> no. And, and then it was like, obviously, we couldn't do it anymore. And then it became all about like the night before Halloween. What's the night before Halloween? Is this something? Yeah. What? What? What do you mean the night before Halloween? The night before Halloween. What's the night before Halloween? October 30th. This is a holiday? It's mischief night, dude. What are you talking about? Hell night. What are you? You're joking. What are you? Are you, you, didn't, to, you didn't. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I, I think you're trying to make fun of me because I don't know much about Halloween. No. You're making this up. No. <laughs> yes, you are. Are you being genuine? <laughs> yes. Are you? Are you lying to make me feel stupid? I, I think this was everywhere. I don't mischief think Mischief is... night? Yeah. The night before Halloween is like, like called hell night or hell mischief night? night? Yeah. I know your face. What are you, you really about? don't know what I'm talking no, I about. I do not. What are you talking about? Uh, that's the night that you would like. Uh, Nothing. You would like teepee someone's front yard. You know what I mean? Toilet paper. We're talking you toilet paper. We're kids? talking like. Egg. I did it too. Eggs. <laughs> we're talking. Eggs. Love you did not egg people. Did you egg people? Not in the face. What do You're you mean? A boy. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. You did. Uh, like flour, where you put like a uh, bunch of like cooking flour. Wait, when you did this to people, because clearly you did, because you're talking about this in detail, did you do it to your friends, like your buddies, or did you do it to strangers and ruin their life? Ruined their lives? No. Yeah, I, th- I don't know. Like, it was... You did it to strangers? No. Lovey. I don't know. I don't remember. Think about how angry What's you'd be. What's the statute of limitations got... on something like this? What do you mean? Like, could I be sent to... You really did this? I'm so... Wait, so the hell... Not I... in, like, any bad way. It was just It was just kind of fun to be, like... Did your parents know you were doing this? friends. Like, I don't know. Like, just, like, running around in the woods, like, you know what I mean? With, like, a dozen eggs and, like, a couple rolls of toilet paper. But it was just, like, us, like, running around, goofing off. Like, we, I remember one one um, mischief shocked. night, me and my, our friends were like, if we get separated because we're running from somebody, like, we need, like, code names. And like, like one of, one of our friends was like, we were just like, had like silly code names that like had something to do with our last name. But like one of our friends was like, call me white wolf. And we were like made fun of him literally for the rest of his life to this day. Do you remember your code names? It was like, it, like, it was literally like stocks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or something like that. Like, but he wanted to be that. We White wolf. Yeah. I can't wait till after this podcast is done. And you tell me who it is. <laughs> um, I'm sure and I we know. still make fun of him for it. Uh, and that was like in seventh grade. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Did your parents? You know really you don't out? know about this. I have this? never heard of. I've never heard of mischief night or hell night. I've never heard of that. Yeah, surely. And that's it's the a night thing. before Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. I've never Eve. heard of it. Yeah, that's so weird to me. Mm-hmm. Just a night to be a douchebag. Yeah, totally. I guess if that's your version of that. So, do your parents know that you were out doing this? It wasn't like no. This wasn't like sanctioned. This wasn't like okay, go out with your friends and like do these things. It was you know you just. I would be so upset with Flynn if he did that. I'd be so sad if he was out egging strangers. Lovey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like throwing eggs at people. Is that what you imagine? So you just throw them at their house? No, you don't want that. You don't want to like ruin property. This wasn't about like being like destructive in that way. It was kind of just, like I said, like innocent mischief. But where do you throw the eggs then? You're not throwing them at people. You're not throwing them at a house. Just like, you know, at the highway from an overpass or something like that. I'm kidding. Like, so you're uh, doing like moving cars like over no, the freeway? No. I like need more details because I'm very confused. I, I like, like I not said, I don't know the statute of limitations, oh so I will not God. give you any, especially I am publicly. I rest about this information. I just can't believe that you didn't know that this was a, a day. I feel like you're lying. Still, yes. October, Google it on your phone. Okay, October thirtieth. Would you say like the like Halloween Eve mischief night? Is that a thing? Like I don't know. Halloween like, Eve. Or yeah, I think mischief night. I think these mischief are things. Mischief night. Yeah, mischief night. Yeah, I, yeah, mischief night. Sure, okay. I think that's what we called it. Hell night. Yeah. Mischief night. Yeah. Mischief night is an informal holiday on which children and teenagers engage in pranks and vandalism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is known by a variety of names, including Devil's Night, Gate Night, Goosey Night, Moving Night, Cabbage Night, and Matt Night. I can't believe you would play with vandalism as a child. It was just like uh, part of the fun, I guess. Wait, Mischief Night. Oh, you're wrong, though. It says, what day is Mischief Night? 
2020. Mischief Night falls on November 4th, 2020, a day before Bonfire Night. What, where are these holidays I've never heard of? You don't know Bonfire Night? How to celebrate Devil's Night? What are all these holidays? See, this is why my parents did not let me celebrate. Following a brief history of Mischief Night in Time Magazine, this article. I'm telling you, it's a thing. You it's thought a, I was but, making but this up why legitimately? Why did you participate in a mean day that's just to cause vandalism? Lovey. I grew up, there was in a town that was very like kind of rural, like just woods. You know what I mean? It's just us and, and BMX bicycles mm-hmm. and, sk- and skateboards. And it was just like, this is what we did was right. You know what I mean? It was, so we just ride our bikes around anyways. And so like, this was just the one night that we would do it. And like, let's throw toilet paper at. Toilet paper doesn't bother me as much as the eggs and this is like flower bombs or whatever you're saying you did. You would put like cooking flour in a coffee filter. Uh-huh. And then when you threw it at something, it would kind of like go psh, and like all the f- cooking flour would come out. Lovey, this is so a spooky episode. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am spooked. <laughs> I'm spooked beyond this is so belief. A but do you know what's not spooky? Third love. Mm? Let's talk about bras. Let's speaking of let's get into bras. Egging people. Let's talk about bras. That is a good transition. All right. I don't know if you guys knew about this, but I'm pregnant. And it's really, I know it's crazy. It's really important for me to feel comfortable all day. This is something that happens when you become a pregnant person. You're just like, I don't care what I look like. Well, at least for me and pregnant people I know. I don't care what I look like. I just want to be comfortable. Like I only put on actual clothes if I have to leave the house and see someone important like a doctor. Like if I, even if I'm going to grocery store, pajamas, like mm-hmm. it is, give me, make me as cozy as possible. And that even applies to my underwear, guys. We put our bodies through so much, pushing them to the limit for sport, family, fashion, or for just plain fun. And when you think about it, it's pretty incredible our bodies keep up. Third Love believes every body is amazing and deserves to be treated that way. That's why they design underwear, loungewear, activewear, and feel good all day wear that hug better, hold stronger, and support longer. So you can feel comfortable all day long, no matter what your body faces. So I've had a really good experience with Third Love overall. I love that they have this personalized quiz that you take. And my body's obviously changed so much throughout this pregnancy, especially that area of my body has changed immensely and is continuing to change. So it's really nice that there's a personalized quiz I can take and talk about the changes in my body and they can personalize a bra to me that adjusts to how my body's adjusting. Um, I actually just retook it, I think last week. And there were questions about like, are you pregnant? Are you, there's like all the, I mean, they ask every single question you could wonder about your booby area how about you lovey did you fill out this i have my own questionnaire that i've established <laughs> so but it's really really nice it's nice that i don't have to go into a bra store and pick out a bra it's nice that they just customize it straight to me um it's the fitting room quiz is just amazing it's really efficient and it's great that i can keep changing it as my body changes it's wonderful so they have the best comfort and quality out there Third Love obsesses over each stitch, so you never have to think about how something feels, looks, or wears. While trends come and go, Third Love has always stayed true to one notion. We do comfort, you do you. Third Love brings comfort from the sheets to the streets. Ooh, I love that. (laughs) With the softest sleepwear, luxury washable silk, and bras that you won't want to take off when you get home. The 90,000 five-star reviews don't lie. Bras are available in exclusive half cups, underwear, loungewear, activewear in extra small through 3X. The fitting room quiz, like I said, is amazing. It's like a personal shopper, but better. It focuses on your size, breast shape, current fit issues, and your personal style to find bras and underwear that are perfect for you. The fitting room has helped 18 million women find their true bra size, and you could be next. Love your fit, guaranteed. If not, Exchanges and returns are free for 60 days. So if you guys want to check it out and you're um, interested in this wonderful product that I love so much, feeling is believing upgrade to everyday pieces that love your body as much as you do. Right now, you can get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash relax. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash relax. All right, lovey, I have a question for you. Did you ever have anything spooky or scary happen to you on Halloween? Sure. What? Like haunted spooky things? Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. Uh, top of my head. No, I wish I, I mean, (laughs) I think that like, 
there was always like a fear that there would be like some sort of something in the candy, right? Mm -hmm. Like there was like, the, yes. like the people that would give you like an app. Like, I think that's all like pretty much myth based. No, it's, I think those things are real. Like a razor in an app. Like, yeah. And that's what, and that's what my parents, the first time I ever trick or treated, my parents were like, you can go like trick or treating, but we have to sort through your candy and look for razor blades. I can remember people like looking me. for like holes. I mean, I was always very careful. I was always because of whether it's a myth or not. I don't know. I'm not going to be the authority on that um, subject, but like I can always remember as a kid. Yes. Being like parents inspecting candy and myself like being like afraid and like yeah, making sure there was not like a any open packaging or like mm -hmm. even a whole, you know what I mean? Like, like anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. For because sure. Because you're, you're accepting something that you're going to take into your body from a stranger. From, yeah. Which is a very weird um, concept. Yeah. There was always like the, um, I think there was always like the doors you were kind of like afraid to knock on mm -hmm. versus the ones where you knew the, the people, the neighbors that would give out the king size mm -hmm. candy bars, you know? Oh yeah. Did you know those neighbors? Not as a kid. Well, I only went two years in a row. Oh, right. But then as an adult, I've gone trick or treating with friends and you know, the neighborhoods where they're like, Oh, they're giving out the king I've, size. I've gone trick or treating in Kim Kardashian's neighborhood. Whoa. Just saying. Like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For real. And I'm talking as an adult. You, yeah. I mean, like there were children. I was, I was not trick or treating. Did you know I did children? not get it was my niece and nephews. Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> yes. I went with family, but we have uh -huh. really close family friends who live in Near this them. community. And, and, um, we went trick or treating. What did the Kardashians give out for Halloween? Well, I didn't go to their house. Why not? You're right there in her neighborhood. Well, I didn't know which one was their house. I'm not a stalker. I'm not like memorizing famous people's what, did addresses. What, they just throw it over the gate? I'm sure they didn't give out anything. I doubt there was nothing there, but, and I'm sure like you can't even get to their house. That's like, what I'm if, saying. Like, but it was like the, it was in the vicinity of, you know? The guard house. Yeah. So, um, but that the neighborhood near them, everyone like is very competitive to be like, give out the best candy. So I'm talking like huge king size, king size, mass, not just like full size candy bars, like the king size of a, which mm -hmm. why are they called king size? If they're bigger? Why not queen size? Or why not just like extra large or something? Like, I don't know, like king size. I don't know. I think it's just like a marketing term. I guess so. Um, anyway, uh, that was really, really fun. I get, I'm very easily spooked. I'm scared of the dark. I'm scared of kind of everything. It was I'm, always like, I remember like as a kid, like, you know how like the time winds down, it starts getting later and later. People start turning off the lights and like you're walking around the neighborhood. Everyone's kind of dressed up. Like, yeah, that can be like kind of, it was like a spookier time. But you never had like a Especially on the East experience. Coast where it's like you have that fall crisp wet. You know what I mean? It was like, just like a different mm -hmm. and very woodsy vibe. Well, here, here, I don't really get that. You know, what's funny is I feel like Halloween was scarier when I didn't celebrate Halloween than when I started to not because like I saw, oh, it's not a scary holiday, but because we turned off all the lights in our house so that no one would come up to our house and trick or treat. Mm -hmm. And we just had to sit in the dark, like in silence during trick or treating. And which is, oh, cause you won't want people to even come yeah, to your and house. And so then like, you'd be like scared. Someone is going to come knock on the door. And it's like spooky if someone knocks on your door and you're like sitting there like, so about I horror, which you, we also traditionally would watch like horror movies, like oh, month no, of October no, no, leading no, no, no. up to. No. Why do you think I can't watch scary movies now? I can't watch anything because you never horror that doesn't make scary sense. because you never because watched I was never desensitized to it. I was uh. never like I never I didn't grow up watching that stuff, and I've never really watched that stuff. Scary movies I didn't start watching until I was in my twenties, so scare like well, you literally don't watch them scare. Now. The crap out of me, like cannot sleep for weeks. Scare me so bad, and that's why. But that um, can be like thrilling in its own. Well, it's way. thrilling and like fun a good for other scare people. In a movie is like, ooh, fun. You know, what it's I mean? not fun for me. Gotcha. I have friends who are obsessed with Halloween Horror Nights, like at the theme parks here. Never been to that. And really, never been to that or like the scary farm thing. They're or... awful. And my, I have friends who are obsessed with taking me because I, well, not obsessed, but they enjoy when I go with them because you're so because I'm genuinely so terrified. I like cry and like get hoarse from screaming and like pee my pants. Like I'm like terrified of that stuff. And so everyone laughs at me because of how scared I get. And at those Halloween horror night like things. like the hayride thing that they do I here will in never LA, do that. The Griffith I will, Park. I will like, never do that. Well, I don't like that. I don't like these kind of like conceptual, like interactive Halloween events where like people are paid to dress up scary and get in your face. Like, no, I don't, I like, don't that. like that. Well, that's what these things are. That's what they are. Halloween Horror Nights is like people coming up to you with chainsaws, running up to your face I with feel a like some of the, because like, you're a big escape room enthusiast. I yeah, feel like some, really some escape rooms are kind of. Yeah, and I hate those. There's one like I went this, to right? with um, Joey. Joey Graceffa is one of my best friends. And 
we went to a bunch of escape rooms before the pandemic. We'd go all the time. Like I feel like every other week I'd go to an escape room with Joey. Yeah, you were like really into I it. I loved at one point. it. And there was one we went to that was so freaking scary. Joey was laughing the whole time because I was I couldn't participate. Like it was just me and him. And, and we went to this, it was like fear. a haunted, spooky house. It was so scary. And all the clues were like things that the ghosts made happen so that lights would go out and like some a candlestick would fall over. Um, like there'd be a tiny little closet you have to go in. But in order to get the clue, you had to turn off the lights and close lock yourself in the closet to see the clues on the walls. Like it was fun, awful. And the final clue, like Joey had to lock himself in a tiny cupboard on the op, like through like four, we went through like four different rooms. He had to lock himself in this tiny cupboard. And then I, by myself had to go back through the haunted house alone to the front door. And that was the only way to escape. The escape room was like, if we were separated Mm -hmm. in pitch black and he was locked in a cupboard and I had to go through the house by myself. It was horrendous. It was awful. He loved it. He said it's one of the best ones he's ever done. And I (laughs) hated it. But um, has any spooky thing ever happened to you? Not on Halloween, but a lot of spooky things have happened to me. I mean, we keep saying we're going to talk ghost stories one episode. And that's kind of what my plan was for this one. But we talked about so many other things that once again, the ghost stories are going to have to be another episode. But we've got Halloween for a whole month. So we can do another like ghost episode um, of like ghost stories that didn't happen on Halloween. But I'm curious. I wanted to talk about before we go our favorite Halloween memories and I will, which we kind of already have touched on, but like, there's like, if you have a specific favorite Halloween that you remember, and I would, would want to talk about mine because I always thought it would have been like, for me, I always thought it would have been the one where I was Dorothy from the wizard of Oz Mm -hmm. because it was like the first one I remember going trick or treating, even though everyone made fun of me. But I think my favorite one was one that happened recently, which was, um, obviously last year was a bust because <laughs> of COVID. Um, but I think my, my favorite was when I, I went on, uh, Ryan and Kelly or Kelly and Ryan. I always forget which order that is. And I dressed up like Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz. Cause we had to dress up as one of yeah. our favorite childhood I Halloween costumes. Yeah. And I was like, I only have one <laughs> so I dressed up like that. But it was so fun because in that episode, we got to do a Miranda segment. So I dressed up like Miranda. I got to do like their live stream before the show. Where I dressed up like a cat. And then on the show live on air, I got to dress up like Dorothy and the other guests on that show were the property brothers Mm -hmm. and they were so nice. And it was just such a fun day. And it was like a total blast. And I I got to be, I I was either promoting my book or it was either my book or like season two of haters or something. I don't remember, but that was a really, I was just thinking about it. I was like, I think that was my favorite Halloween. It was so fun. It was so fun to get to dress up all these multiple different times and like Mm -hmm. be on TV. And I don't know. It was fun. So I was, but I was thinking, I wonder what Eric would say if I asked him. I feel like I always end up working on Halloween. Like I'm always really the last few ones. Yeah. Really? Were you working last last year? year. No, last year, nobody was working. Mm -hmm. Um, But like years before that. Yeah. Like I think the few years before that, it just always happened to be in production. uh, Really? On something. Um, But yeah, I would say all of them just like walking around with my my siblings and and dressed i think that ninja turtle costume and has like a special place like she took like um like faux brown uh like let like leather pleather that you get at like a joanne's fabrics and made this like like you know hand or like or with a a sewing machine made this shell and then with like puff paint like detailed the shell and it had a whole strap that came over and then like a cloth like the turtles what a turtle stomach looked like it was just like so elaborate I just thought it was like, I feel like she worked on it for a month. That's so cool. But like, and I like treasure and I treasure that like memory. And I think we still have it somewhere. And like, cause there was, really? there was like a, a, an old cedar chest in my parents' house that they still have. That was like just the Halloween costume chest. So you could always open it and play if you wanted to as a kid. Um, but like, then if you look back on like photos of that, it looks so like kind of bootleg and like to use one of your favorite words, like janky kind of that, like, that's my favorite, but like in like this cool, like, um, so much better than like party city costumes look like party city costumes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, it was like this cool, like, you know, stranger things esque time in my life. I don't know. I just like, it's, Do I'm you, very fond of that. Which, I, and I, and I hope for that for our son and I can't wait for him to experience like a genuine Halloween. I don't know what this year will be like. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Because it's such a strange 
time yeah. with all, all of everything. Um, but like, I, I hope for him that like, it's something that he's really into and like stressing up and mm-hmm. going around and getting candy. Like, I hope that I, I, I want my son to like have these kind of cool. Your sons. You're going to have two. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think our kids will love it. Um, yeah. I'm excited for it. Like, yeah, it's exciting for me because since I did not get to celebrate it as a kid, it's really fun to watch my kid enjoy it. Like he really did. Even though we couldn't celebrate last year, we went to my brother's house and they trick or treated door to door in their house. Right. You set up like different and stations. Yeah. He had fun with that. And, um, and then the year before we actually went trick or treating, but he was really tiny. I just so, carried him the whole time. Yeah, we just carried yeah. him and he was tired. Um, so this year I think is the first year he's going to understand it. And this might be the first year he might have some sort of memory of it. Maybe probably not, but you know, for next year he might remember it. right now. He doesn't remember it. He doesn't understand what it is. So we keep trying to explain to him for Halloween, you have a costume. What do you want to be? And he does not get yeah, what we're saying at all. Can figure, I mean, I don't know. You're outside and you're, you know what I mean? Well, I don't know. Maybe people can figure out a way to make it still happen. This you year. know, I, I reached out to one of my mom friends this morning, actually, about that. I was like, what are you doing for Halloween? Because I want to do something with Flynn, but I want to make sure it's as safe as possible. And it might just be something where we give him candy, because I don't know that I want to accept candy from other people. But just to have him have that experience of like, like we can go door to door and he can collect it. But then like, we don't let him eat that particular <laughs> candy. I don't know. Um, but I'm I'm trying to find out if there's like a safe thing, celebration we'll somewhere outdoor. We'll make it outdoor. fun for him, I'm sure. Regardless, it'll be a blast. We yeah. just have to figure out what our costumes are going to be. It's very important. No, help us out. Uh, if you have any good ideas, yes, you please. can leave a, send us a tweet or leave a, leave a comment. But um, even though we spent most of this episode arguing uh we i hope you guys enjoyed it because <laughs> we i had fun yeah good one um we love me. you guys thanks for listening and have a wonderful week we'll see you next week with more spooky episodes maybe i don't know what we're doing next week <laughs> bye you can relax colleen and eric have a podcast the world is scary and we're locked in our home but now we have big microphones so you can relax that's the name of our podcast